call the emergency school committee meeting to order it being Saturday, October 9, 2021, it being past 9 o'clock. Uh, before we, uh, well, let's establish a quorum first. Uh, Mr. Sullivan? Here. Mr. D'Agostino? Here. Mr. Minicello? Here. Mrs. Mendez? Here. Ms. Azak? Here. Mr. Sullivan? Here. The chair is here as well. Before we get into uh, to the meeting, I do have to read the following into the record that was uh, prepared by our uh, attorney, Peter Mello. The meeting of the Brockton School Committee convened on October 9, 2021 has been, call, has been called with the goal of reviewing the events of Friday, yesterday, October 8, 2021, and the emergency response that followed. Due to an ongoing criminal investigation and the risk of providing privileged information that could undermine the work of law enforcement, there will be no public comment period today. Additionally, certain speakers today uh, have prepared written statements which we read into the record. The speakers will not take questions at the conclusion of their statements as the information they are allowed to publicly disclose at this, at this time is already reflected in their statements. Information that is intentionally absent from their statements includes any personal identifying information about the student or witnesses, as well as any discussion of motive, of, or, um, motive or the student's emotional state when the incident occurred. Any discussion of such information would be detrimental to the work of investigators and therefore will not be permitted at this time. The majority of this meeting will be devoted to reviewing our safety protocols and devising a plan for enhancing safety measures to be enacted on the morning of Tuesday, October 12, 2021. Again, due to the ongoing nature of the investigation, I as chair reserve the right to disrupt any comment or line of questioning that could undermine the work of the law enforcement. And I thank you. Um, just a piece of information again, as you remember, uh, we have called six o'clock next Tuesday, uh, subcommittee, which will be public safety at that time, because I know we have some teachers here. At that time, we will have hearing of the visitors. This is not a public hearing, this is a public meeting, but next Tuesday, we will entertain that. I do want to reflect that Chief Manny Gomes is here. Thank you for being here today. Uh, Brockton Police Chief, uh, Dr. Cliff Murray, uh, Principal of Brockton High School. Jess Hodges, I want to thank Jess for all her work yesterday, all of her work. Uh, and of course, I do want to especially thank uh, Superintendent Mike Thomas, and Deputy Superintendent Dr. Suzakowitz, who uh, really, really uh, showed their professionalism yesterday. Um, so we will, we will be talking, we'll be hearing from Superintendent Thomas, Dr. Murray, uh, Police Chief Gomes, and then we can all discuss our own, our own endeavors. I do just want to reflect again what the statement said. We're talking about a minor that was involved in an active investigation, and there will be due process hearings. So that, that shouldn't be discussed at this time. It should just be a process enhancements and protocols. Um, so I will uh, open it up with Superintendent Thomas. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mayor. So, um, so yesterday morning, I don't know if I is this on. I can't hear myself. All right. Um, get my glasses. So um, just to fill you in a timeline, um, at eight fi uh, nine fifty seven, um, Dr. Mari was called to the house office. Um, because he was informed there was uh, a student uh, was in the office and um, that student could have a gun in his bag. Um, at 10.05, um, the student that was in the office did indeed have a gun in his bag. Um, Cliff actually called me right around 10.01 to let me know he was heading to the house office of the situation. Uh, at 10.05, he informed me the student it was, who was in the house office indeed had a gun in his bag and Officer Vaughn had the weapon without incident. And 1014, I was on the phone with Chief Gomes. Um, we talked a few minutes about, um, you know, about the um, gun dogs. He, deci we decided, he decided to call into the gun dogs and to report to, to BHS to do a sweep. 1018, I called Cliff back. Um, he, was, he was still in the house office. I said, put the school in a stay in place. Uh, the gun dogs are on their way to be a, uh, to do a sweep. I arrived at BHS at 10:45, and to manage the situation with Cl Cliff and Chief Gomes and the mayor was with us as well. Uh, the sweep was completed at 11:35. At that time, around 11:40, all the buses were in place, so we called for the early dismissal at 12. So um, that's the timeline. Uh, I want to thank Dr. Zachwood. Stayed back at Central. Um, so we could, you know, basically we call central command to make sure we're informing, getting calls out to parents. We also send emails to all the other principals so they know what's going on. So if anybody's calling um, those schools, because that does happen, that the principals in their 
assistant principals and administrative assistants know exactly um, what's going on at Brockton High, so there's no confusion that it's happening at another school. Um, the stay in place, so just quickly about how we're trained. A lockdown is called when there's an active um, threat in the building. That means there would be somebody going around to do harm uh, and the situation's not under control. A stay in place is called when the situation's under control and we need to investigate and then further bring in the police to do their investigation. So, um, and I can bring Cliff up to go over his. Yeah, th thank you very much. I also just want to reflect that the Vice Chairman Mark D'Agostino and, and Joyce Azak, uh, School Committee woman, were here yesterday at that time as well. Uh, and I also uh, just want to make it clear to everybody that there were no injuries. Uh, it was resolved in a peaceful manner. It was a serious threat. Um, but as we stated during the press conference yesterday, we do want to applaud the students that spoke up. Uh, we say, always say, we've always said this, right? If you see something, say something. So, uh, you know, the, the staff, the students that spoke up, but then more importantly, with the stay in place, and Mike and I share this, it was done exceptionally well. The teachers, the students, everybody stayed calm. It would have been mayhem if it wasn't that way. So I do, uh, I do just want to state that um, everything that had been prepared, uh, and you'll hear from Chief Gomes and Dr. Murray, but everything that had been prepared, worst case scenario, for the best case scenario, came to fruition yesterday. So, Dr. Murray. Good morning. Good morning. So uh, I really can't uh, say enough about our staff and uh, the students. Uh, the students did the right thing. Uh, the staff responded beautifully. We did take a few minutes to ascertain what we felt the situation was once we were satisfied that we didn't have any additional issues or this was not um, something that involved other individuals. Uh, we, we were very comfortable with the actions that we had taken with the assistance of school police. I informed Mr. Thomas, you know, immediately. Uh, one of the things that uh, we did discuss in our debrief was the timing. Unfortunately, this all occurred right before uh, passing, and uh, the bell did ring for the following period, but again, where uh, we did not feel there was any kind of significant uh, concern once we had resolve this incident. We started the, uh, the process of allowing students to change classes. Um, I knew that the buses would be coming around noontime, thought that uh, it was a wise idea to let them move one last time. Uh, superintendent and Chief Gomes directed us to do a stay in place, uh, that the, the gun dogs and other officers were arriving. I did send an email to my staff, which is kind of a breach of protocol before the stay in place, simply because I was concerned with the helicopters, the large contingent of police officers, the dogs. We had additional police officers in the building, and uh, I did not want that to create any kind of additional panic. There was some confusion, obviously, at the bell, but the staff responded beautifully, as did the students. We had a lot of cooperation from parents, and um, I had an opportunity to walk around the building, as did the deans and assistant deans. <clears throat> we actually had a lot of good instruction going on still, as is the case with a stay in place. Um, our expectation is the students will continue to do their schoolwork. I can't be uh, more thankful for Chief Gomes and his staff after what they all had gone through the evening before. They were all very, uh, very positive, very supportive, and again, our school police who were uh, were right there when we needed them. So it was, uh, you know, let's say you can train all you want, but in the heat of the moment, it is not always the way you train, but I thought the staff especially did a great job getting the kids into uh, a safe location. And uh, again, with the shooting in Texas, the events of the evening before, uh, I felt it was important to try and convey that everything was under control, but that as an abundance of caution, as the superintendent put it, we were going to uh, use the additional uh, assets of the Brockton police and the gun dogs. Dr. Murray, I also want to uh, just put into the record how uh, I witnessed you getting on the, on the intercom st steady and calm uh, and giving information to the students and staff. I witnessed that several times, so that was great. I also want to just let everybody know that 
when we were sweeping, um, when Chief Gomes was sweeping, every inch of this building was going to be swept, right, from the gym all the way to here, the fine arts, every nook and cranny. And Dr. Murray said, let's also sweep Marciano Stadium. There's a football game there tomorrow, being today. So um, that was really great insight, and that was done as well. So thank you for that, Dr. Murray. Again, it was a team effort. I, we have a great uh, set of administrators, and the teachers were fantastic. Uh, you couldn't ask for a more professional, competent group of people. Um, you know, I'm sure they had a lot of questions, but they, they did what we were asked, what we're asking them to do. And uh, again, I think it really speaks very highly of our teaching staff and our students. Thank you very much, Doctor. Yeah, and I just want to add that um, I've done this for several years when I was director of operations and then deputy superintendent. I've been to uh, me, Lieutenant Mills uh, at the time, uh, Lieutenant Fadaro, um, Nancy Lieberg. We've been, I've been to so many of these trainings. We've seen, we've seen video surveillance of you know after action reports, and that's how we have to inform you know how was our timeline? Can we do things better? How did we dismiss the students, um, the placement of the buses, the vans? Did we do the best we could do to dismiss the students who were walkers, who were going over to stop and shop to, to meet their parents? Uh, how do we dismiss the students with disabilities? So, you know, all those things are reviewed. But in all those trainings I've been to, um, they'll show videos of the inside, uh, you know, surveillance camera footage, and these are after of you know schools that where um, students and staff don't do and follow the protocols of a stay in place or a lockdown and if two or three classes start to leave and then all others see and then you see the hallways and you see the panic and people just going everywhere and with a building of you know there's about 4,500 here every day so um, for everyone to do what they were supposed to do if again if two, even one or two classes leave um, when they're not supposed to, it, it would set off a domino effect. Again, that hasn't happened here, um, which was great. So again, I commend the amazing job of the staff because it's nerve wracking. I mean, no one wants a gun in the school. I mean, I went to school here. I worked here for 10 years. We do not obviously want guns in the school. So it, it's not a good situation at all. Um, but you know, the way, you know, the, the staff reacted and the students reacted to stay calm, you know, really helped calm the situation down. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. Thank you, Doctor. Chief Combs, good morning, Manny. Thank you for being here. Good morning. Again, just thank you um, and your team and school police as well for yesterday and, of course, the, the night previous as well. So thank you for being here today, Chief. Thank you. Good morning. Um, I'd just like to um, highlight the actions of the Brockton Police Department yesterday. Uh, I was notified by the superintendent of an incident here um, mid-morning. Uh, we quickly uh, moved in the PD. We got all available assets. It means all personnel and equipment. We mobilized uh, everyone out of the station. We pulled uh, school resource officers from other schools and officers that were on other assignments outside of the station. We mobilized. We came here. I also uh, activated uh, upon what was reported to me, uh, I believe that the building needed to be swept. Um, and the best use for that uh, is to use specially trained uh, canines in the search of firearms. We activated um, a thing that we have with the canines. Brockton Police has five dogs, and we also belong to a region of mutual aid dogs. So we activated all dogs that could respond to the Brockton High School at that time. While we were doing that, we set up a perimeter and we stopped all non-essential traffic inbound um, in, into, the, into the grounds. We set up a, a parent or uh, slash pickup area across the street in the old uh, stop and shop parking lot. Felt that that'd be the best uh, location to do it. Everyone was in place. Um, I came on scene, the, all the dogs arrived, um, the, the, the building was, was in, in lockdown, it was also very orderly. Uh, I made the decision to send in some canines, the non-gun uh, dogs, to do a protective sweep before the children uh, moved. 
make sure that there was nothing in the halls or in the bathrooms or anything that we didn't know. And once that sweep was done, um, there was a release. And then uh, after that, the gun dogs were brought in and searched the entire building. There were several dogs here that specialized in that. And those dogs searched this building from end to end. And then, uh, as, as was mentioned, then we went over and did the, uh, the stadium as well. Um, no other items were found. And uh, at that time, once we concluded our operation, the Brockton Police Department secured. But I also want to take this, this uh, opportunity to commend the superintendent and his entire staff. Uh, when I arrived here, I found it orderly. Um, it was clear to me that policies, procedures, and training had kicked in. And uh, that, that is a big plus for us, that we didn't have a panic situation. And uh, I want to commend them. I want to commend the, the, the school police. Uh, I thought everyone um, you know, fell back on their training, and uh, they are very professional. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chief Gomes. Uh, again, I want to thank Superintendent uh, Dr. Murray and Chief Gomes. And at this time, we'll, uh, we'll open up to have conversation relative to the school committee. Uh, and I'll start with uh, the vice chairman. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, yeah, I just, again, want to um, say, you know, I, I got here about the same time as the superintendent yesterday, um, and uh, everything was happening very orderly. Um, I appreciate the, the, the staff in the building, the, the, the parents, um, the students, um, you know, everybody, the, the response at every level was um, exactly as we as the district is always trained for and is exact, exactly as it should have been there was calm in the building um, which is so important in these types of situations um, you know I want to thank uh, the chief and the and Brockton police and school police um, they did a great job they they um, you know it was it was I mean literally I, I have to say everything went um, seamless yesterday um, and uh, obviously it's a um, you know, situation we nobody wants to have happen, but um, thankfully um, we've got the training in place, and um, you know we 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 knew what to do, and and everybody did what what they've been trained to do. So um, I just want to thank everybody on behalf of the school committee yesterday that was involved in the response. Um, you know, for for uh, for everything they did to um, address the situation, it was. Um, you know, again, uh, handled very professionally at all at all levels, and and especially the the students. I mean, um, they, you know, were calm. They stayed in their classes, and the teachers kept them calm. And I, I just, I mean, again, everybody did did very well, and and so I appreciate that. Thank you. I, I also just uh, thank you very much for appearing on site yesterday with us. That meant a lot in Joyce as well, and we'll get to Joyce in one second. We say staff, of course, we're talking about the teachers, right, but we're also talking about the custodians, yes. the people that work in the lunchrooms. I mean, the, the crossing guys. I, I witnessed everybody. Everybody was working as a team um, for the safety of the kids, and it was, it was really great to see. Um, so thank you again, Mark. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to Joyce now before we open up to other members. Joyce, thank you for being here today and yesterday as well. Um, so what I witnessed yesterday is what we've been training for and seeing it firsthand, um, it was impressive. It was calm. We did what we needed to do. Our superintendent was keeping everybody updated. Um, and, and Jess Hodges, um, she, whatever we asked for, our superintendent, get it on social media. If parents were not getting their Connect Ed calls, because they're at work or they can't answer the phone, we got it on social media. The word got out where the children need, well, our students needed to go. Uh, we have a plan in place. You know, we're very lucky. We, you know, we got through yesterday and this is why we're here today. Safety is our priority. And if it wasn't for our superintendent, our mayor, Chief Gomes, um, and, and BPS teachers, staff, and our police officers, I mean, when I showed, on, showed up on site, they were in groups, and they were doing what they needed to do to get, you know, uh, keep us safe. So I just, I'll keep it brief, because I'm sure there's others that want to speak, but again, this is part of the training. We've actually done the training, the ALICE training, 
but this is part of the training that we've always prepared for, you know, the few years I've been on the school committee. So seeing it firsthand was very calm, and that's not what I expected. I figured everything would be a frenzy, but it was very calm. So thank you, Superintendent Thomas, um, Mayor Sullivan, and Chief Gomes for um, getting our students safely out of the building and making sure everything was secure. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Azak. I'm going to go in no particular order. Mr. Minicello, please. I'd like to also thank law enforcement and the um, superintendent and his staff. I'm not sure if that's on, Tom. Yeah, it's on. It's yeah, on. It's on. It, it is? Yeah. It's not how too loud would, today. How important would you say it is that um, the Brockton school police are struck, the structure, command structures through the police department rather than the school department? Um, we had these discussions probably, uh, I want to say it was actually before uh, Mayor Carpenter, late Mayor Carpenter took, um, when I came downtown in 2010 as director of operations, that's when, um, I'm sorry, it was, no, it was 2007. Um, and um, Linda Balzotti was still the mayor. Uh, and we had discussions when um, they sent up um, Lieutenant Mills when there was a shooting on the steps of Brockton High. And Mr. Minicello, you were, you were involved in that as well. Um, and the discussion then was because at the time, the person before me, who was the director of operations, was actually the person in charge of school police. So and I think it was you, Mr. Minicello, that said this is not a good setup uh, to have a civilian. Um, and luckily, that was you worked with the school committee at the time and uh, Mayor Balzotti and the city council uh, to, um, to put a, a lieutenant in charge. So was, um, the, the school committee agreed to pay the lieutenant's salary. Mm -hmm. The city council had to change the ordinance yep, to add did. to a 12 to 13 lieutenants. I might be off on my numbers. Oh, you're was, right. We did that. Yep. <laughs> I try to, my memory's still pretty good. Um, and then Chief Gomes sent over, I think it was the time might have been Chief Connolly. Um, and he sent over Lieutenant Mills, and he was our first lieutenant. And, um, but at that time, to your point, there were discussions of having a merger. A one, you are allowed by law to have a one-time merger because school police uh, are employees. They are not civil service employees, but there is allowed to do a one-time merger if it's agreed by the school committee and the city council to have them under, fully under the Brockton Police with a, um, a school division. So. It's a good point, Mr. Minicello, and I think it's discussions that we have to have going forward. It died, um, you know, going forward. A lot of other things happened, and it w was never, um, never talked about again um, after um, Linda Balzotti and, uh, left office. So, but I, I agree with you because, again, you were, you were the one that was here, um, and you, you were the one that really worked hard to bring a lieutenant, and, and rightfully so because I was the person who took the operations job, and I did not want to be in charge of you know, um, sworn in offices, because I don't, again, I'm not, a, I'm not a lieutenant, I'm not a captain, my background isn't in criminal justice. And how would you say the um, training has been for the Brockton uh, School Police since the police department has taken over as excellent. the command structure? Absolutely, ex yep, excellent. They get all the training um, through the police department. Um, they have to follow all the required training through the police department, so again, that's been that's been a huge, a huge difference. And again, and I've been involved in it deeply for 10 years. And since we've had the Brockton Police Command structure in place, would you say that our um, training has improved or our training over the years is better than it was before having the Brockton Police involved? Oh, 200%. In and not only that, Mr. Minicello, is, it was also Lieutenant Mills um, and, and the Brockton Police, who, you, know, they're, you know, they're the ones who really were uh, you know, the driving force between, you know, how we were trained in lockdowns and stay in place. Now it's Alice. Um, you know, th those things have all been, you know, was the reason why all those were put in place is because the structure was changed. What would you say that the parents can expect for uh, safety protocols going forward for Tuesday for the students? Well, there'll be extra offices on site, um, several extra offices on site. Um, they'll, you know, they'll be at the entrances. Um, we will have the available, um, we have handheld metal detectors will be available. Um, and, you know, those will all be, the, obviously, Dr. Murray and his staff, usually at the entrances. We will obviously limit the entrances where students come in, where they check in. Um, but that's something we really, you know, that's, 
we'll, we'll be ready for it. I'll be talking to Chief Gomes later more about it, uh, Office of Vaughn, Dr. Murray. So obviously something we'll be um, talking about all weekend, but we will definitely have extra offices. They will be remain here all day. Um, and again, we'll have the wands at the entrances as well. So should parents and students be uh, comfortable coming to school on Tuesday, I guess, with what's going to be I would be. Point? I mean, I, I, um, I'll be here pretty much all morning as well. Um, and so, um, you know, I, don't, I can't get into the background of the student because obviously there's a hearing that t to take place. Um, but, you know, let's just say that it's a very isolated incident. Um, and, um, and there would, this would not be, I, 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 I don't want to say much more because I, you know, that's a very isolated incident. Again, I just wanted to say thank you to law enforcement, our chief of police, who were fortunate to have our mayor and the uh, school department who acted professionally and, um, swiftly and made sure that we as a school committee were informed. So that was great. So thank you all. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's a, it's a t when you, you know, you get the call from Cliff and then, you know, it's, you know, then everything has to kick in. I mean, you have to go by what you've been trained to do uh, and things change. Uh, and then you, you know, as one person, I mean, I had, you know, two phones are going, uh, you know, so thank God for, you know, Dr. Zakowitz who was stayed back and, and she's working directly with Jess, you know, because who needs to get the message? And then Mark, I was on the phone with Mark who then, Okay, Mark, you're going to get you're going to update all the you know the school committee. So when you're in the middle of making all these decisions, then you know before I left Central, my I wanted to get a call out to parents right away. So then you have to record that call. Um, so you got to make sure you do that calm. And this all has to be done with calm, and you know you have to be calm in these situations. So you got to get the call out to parents, which you know in in previous years we didn't do that before we, you know we waited in, to, to make that call to parents and um that's not good so i had to get that call out before i left central um and again i got to the high school where i met mr diagostino we had a park over at the shaw center because you couldn't get onto campus um and walk over so i wanted to make sure that call went out so parents knew we were in a stay in place um and i got to commend the parents because and, and and people like, I did not follow protocol when it comes to the exact training as far as the early release, because if you listen to a lot of places that do this, they would not do an early release. Once the, the threat is, is pretty much um, secured, they would expect you to finish the school day. However, I'm a parent of three girls, and I know what I want. I would want my girls home. Even though the threat, there was no active threat and the threat was settled, I thought it was very important to allow because that just sends up, you know, if you, if you make the students stay in school, make the, the parents wait for them to be dismissed. And again, that's what training tells us, is to just go finish with your regular school day. I didn't feel that was a smart thing to do. I felt it was important because um, I felt it could have set up a safety issue because you have parents who obviously get very upset, rightfully so, and I didn't want them, you know, really getting into conflict with law enforcement at who, who blocked the entrances and say, you know, I need to get in and get my, my child. That's not a good situation. So I felt it was very important to do the early release, which was two hours early. Um, I just did not think it was a smart thing to do to, to make students stay in school, f you know, for another two hours, make parents wait two hours. Same with, you know, same with our staff. Uh, you know, it's, it's very unnerving. And then, you know, they have to try to go through with their regular school day and teach. I just thought the best thing I had to do at, you know, at that time was to do the early release, but that's not what the training tells us. So sometimes you, I disagree with that part of the training, so I went in the opposite direction. Well, thank you very much. And Mark, thank you for uh, so notifying us all. I missed Mark's call, but he said, call me urgently. So when he says, call me urgently, you know you need to call urgently. So thank, thank you. you, and um, thank you, Mr. Thomas. Appreciate thank it. you, Ms. Benicello. Um, so again, I just want to make it clear. I said this during the press conference. We're very fortunate to have each and every one of you, all seven elected school committee members. Two were there yesterday, but the, the other five would have been. But work comes in, you know, you weren't around, but you're here today on a Saturday morning because we understand how important, uh, how dire the situation is. I also will make a plug right now. Whoever gets elected, whoever gets reelected when the new legislation session in, it starts in January, both city council and school committee should wor really work to uh, incorporate what Tom was just talking about. 
making the school police part of the Brockton PD. Uh, state delegation would need to assist on that as endeavor as well, but it truly is the right thing. And I remember when I was a student here in the 80s, Mr. Gentile was the police chief, and people used to say, you know, talking bad about Brockton, I can't believe you have your own police force up there. You know, what is this, martial law? Well, yesterday was an example of how important it was because it was split second, and it could have went backwards real quickly. So thank you, Tom. Um, any other school committee members at this time? Uh, Judy, please. Yes, um, I just wanted to um, speak to the parents. I know that this is the scariest situation that a parent can go through, and I just want the parent. I want to reassure the parents that what you see here, okay, uh, and former mayors, former superintendents, former principals of this school and this system are all working together. This um, police um, Alice training, which is alert, lockdown, inform and I'm not sure of the C and the E, but they have to do with it too, is, <laughs> I know Dr. Murray and Chief Gomes know, but this, this has been, been worked on for, I think, at least five years, the Alice training and the alert and lockdowns, and all teachers have gone through this training, kids, staff. What you see here is people working together for the safety of our children, which is our top concern. These teachers here and staff are amazing. I, I only hear good things when I'm out there. We have to trust that our police, our superintendent, our mayor, will, while the lockdown is in place or the stay in place is in place, that they're protecting our kids, and I know they are, and I'm reassured. I've seen their work over the years, and it just amazes me. But everybody has to work together, and everybody has to... If you see something, if you hear something, let the school committee, that's why we're here. Okay, I, I don't wanna see it on Facebook, I wanna see you emailing me, or other members and calling me, or call the mayor's office, or superintendent's office. We're all here, all the teachers are here to help, and staff, and I just wanted to give everybody a hand for working together, and it, it's a really great job that they do, and it's, it's because of we, it, the, the importance of the safety of your children. So thank you. Thank everyone. you very much. Thank you, Judy. Uh, Mr. Sullivan, please. Yes, Chief Gonza. <clears throat> I was wondering, was there any other incidents like a slip and fall when the kids were trying to get out quick? Oh, was there any other incidents like a slip and fall with the kids trying to get out quickly and go over to the stop and shop? No, there was actually, there was no, there's no one getting out quickly. It was actually a, it was a planned, regular dismissal. So no one was running out of the building. No one was, you know, running. It was a planned dismissal that happened at noontime. The bell rang. I don't know if the bell rang or not. Dr. Murray announced the dismissal and students, I, I was there the whole time. I stood outside. Students walked out like walked they would out. walk out yep. on a normal day. And the students that needed to meet their parents, uh, thanks to Chief Gomes, there were plenty of offices over on um, that side going out by the softball fields um, to make sure students walked, got across, obviously Belmont Street's busy to make sure the students that were getting rides, um, but I was talking, I don't know, I think I talked to about 20 kids on the way out, just, you know, they're asking who I was, and it was a normal, any regular Brockton High dismissal, there was nobody running, and Chief Cohen, the other thing I wanted to ask was the uh, metal detectors. Uh, what, what do you think of the wands? I've seen them at the airport. They, you wand somebody up and down, or you can walk through a metal detector. Manny, if you could just come to the podium because it's being taped. Thank you. <clears throat> Those, are the wands just as good as the metal detector? Y yes, they would be. They would be in incidents like that. Um, that would be something for, uh, for this board to take up. Um, you know, for any future uh, policies to put into action, if you you know if you deem so, okay. and we'll set up the training. No trouble with the kids crossing Belmont Street. Not at all. Uh, to to echo what the superintendent said, uh, it was very orderly, uh, very calm. We had plenty of staff here, and it, it went uh, as well as uh, you could plan for. I just wanted to congratulate you. Chief Gomes, the mayor, the superintendent, Mark D'Agostino, everybody did a, a fabulous job. And it could have went south real quick, 
but it didn't. You know, it was a job well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. And then, uh, I just want to remind everybody that, you know, at, at Brockton High School, there are over, I believe, 250 cameras yep. uh, that have been upgraded over the years. We're ready to do another upgrade. The server is at its capacity. Those cameras are connected directly to the Brockton police. So if there ever was an active shoot situation in the, at the high school, any police officer pulling up in there, um, you know, or even back at the station pu pulling up with their laptop could pull up the cameras. Um, they're connected to the city system. Um, that's still in place. We also, I don't know if people remember this from pre-COVID, um, we have an interior um, shot spot yep. system here at the high school. So if there's ever, uh, we put that in, I, I don't know how many years, it was pre, right before, I think I first became superintendent. So that's in place throughout the building. Not that we ever want to hear, you know, ever want to have to use it or it ever goes off, God forbid, but that is in place because I'm sure some people have forgotten that. Um, that's throughout the entire building. Um, and, you know, obviously that, unfortunately, if there was ever a shooting, um, you know, that would pick that up quickly. So you would identify the exact location in the building. So that spot shot a system is in here. Actually, we were given that system free from a company out of, I think it was out of Nevada, um, as the test for, um, you know, schools across the country. Um, and that system is still in place. Um, and it's tied directly into the police department as well. So I just want to, and now that we're going to be upgrading our server, which is very expensive um, to, to be able to add more cameras because servers can only take up to so many cameras because, again, these are citywide cameras. Um, and, you know, we'll be upgrading that system. I think, it's, I think the, uh, is, the bill has already been paid. We're just waiting for the new server to come in, which obviously is delayed because of the chips, the microchips are not, you know, Everything's delayed with microchips, I guess. That's, yep. that, that will be able to add. I think we're ready. I want, we ought to add, I think, another 50 cameras here at the high school uh, inside and out. But to the already, I think, to over 200 that we have. Yeah, that's correct. Yep. Yep. Just a point of interest on that sh uh, shot spotter system. The salesman was a Brockton High graduate. Yeah, Brockton High graduate. Yeah, it's. Um, that's why he donated it to us. That's why he donated it. Yeah, what's, I can't think I mean, of so it. Oh, Cogliano, Richard Cogliano, Brockton High and graduate. It just goes to show you what Brocktonians do. Yep. Brocktonians. He, that was great. He was con he's the East Coast salesman for this company. They contacted him, and he, they knew of Brockton High because of its size, and that's why he was able to get us the system. Um, and it was a test system, so we didn't have to pay for it. Any other school committee members at this time? If Fo I can follow just follow up, um, Joyce. Sure. Yep. Uh, so, Mr. Sullivan, I I was actually there um, at the administration um, as students were exiting, and honestly, if you didn't know what we went through that morning, you'd never know. I mean, they were leaving calmly, um, and actually, there was there was one teacher, and I apologize. I think her last name was Thompson, yeah, and she was wonderful, absolutely wonderful. That I actually went over to her and said to her, "Thank you." This is what BPS is all about. She was telling the students, have a wonderful weekend, stay safe, very calm with them. This is why, um, you know, I love, I love bar, uh, BPS. And yesterday showed it, showed how everybody came together. So like I said, you'd never know what we went through from what I witnessed, and I was there for a good maybe 20 minutes at the um, administration entrance area as they were leaving. So, but it was calm. Thank you. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to give some information as well, if I could. So Chief Combs and I were actually together at the Brockton Police Department welcoming back the hero officer that had been shot the night before. He had been discharged from BMC in the morning. He came to the police department. We welcomed him back as a hero. And then we found out, and from the um, wonderful feeling of this police officer, thank God he's alive, right? And the camaraderie and the friendship and the family, as Manny said, um, police tactics kicked in because we were notified instantaneously. So the joy of seeing this hero back changed quickly and they put their game face on and they flew up here to Brockton High. So that speaks volumes of the men and women that serve and protect every single day in the city of Brockton. And I wanted that to be reflected because a lot of people wouldn't, wouldn't know that. I also just want to piggyback from the previous conversation we had the other night. Um, when the, the parents came here, rightfully so. Listen, my brother lives in Newtown, and we know what happened in Newtown. 
You know, he's got three kids and he's got a wife, so we know what happens. So we have to plan for the worst, right? So when we hear about incidents in bathrooms and that TikTok BS that's going, um, we as elected officials, as parents, we have a duty. We have a duty. So Tuesday at 6, that duty will continue. We're going to think outside the box. What tools do we need? What additional resources do we need? Cameras are key. Um, changing ordinances to the city council and, and, and uh, whatever we need to do, according to what Mr. Sullivan, the chief, said about authorizing purchase of more uh, tools. We'll do that. But I wanted the superintendent to give an update. All of us know the update relative to the bathrooms, what we've done since that conversation. Um, so, Superintendent, if you don't, it's a little bit off topic, but if you could share it, that'd be important. So, um, I met with, after, uh, on Wednesday morning, I met with the Brockton High School uh, administration just, you know, to go over some of the issues that were brought up uh, by people that spoke, and again, it's appreciated. So, uh, we came up with the idea that, you know, now that we have um, bus drivers who are, you know, used to dealing with kids who are our employees, quarried, fingerprinted, um, so we have 20 of them reporting. Uh, every day after their run. Uh, they finish at about 9. They're back in the, over here at the fairgrounds at about 9.30. Uh, they report to the main office, and actually yesterday was their first day um, to report. So, you know, they'll be, they'll be in Brockton High shirts. Um, they'll ha we, we shipped up, um, I think, uh, 25 new walkie-talkies that we have, because we always have extra, um, and they will be outside of every bathroom. Um, to obviously um, monitor them, you know, call floor teachers, call administration when there's any issues, especially if there's too many students going into the bathrooms. We also had facilities put on an extra six custodians. Those are night custodians. Um, they'll come in during the day uh, between um, 10 and 2 to also help not only um, with monitoring the bathroom, but also getting them more often to clean them. Um, so there's a extra, so there's 26 extra people um, and they'll all be assigned to bathrooms. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Any other comments? Or, I, Mr. Vice Chairman, please. Just a, a quick follow-up, and I, I should have covered it um, earlier, but uh, Mr. Sullivan's question made me think of it, so I wanted to also commend everybody who was, um, uh, when, when I first got the call from, from Mike, I was, he put me on speaker, and you know he pulled everybody who needed to be in his, in his office in um, to go through, okay, this is what we need to do, the, and, and, and it was a very calm, thoughtful, it was, all right, we're doing a dismissal, yep, because none of us would be right as parents until we laid eyes on our, on our child, right? And we all got that, okay, what about the walkers? We gotta make sure that, you know, and parents picking them up, and from there, every, everything, we, it was very thoughtful, very methodical. Um, I think we thought of everything and, and just, you know, went to work. Um, and again, I can't thank the Brockton Police and School Police enough for the, the response they provided. And, um, you know, I mean, uh, but, but really everybody. It was very orderly and, um, but, and, and it was just, but everything was thought of and everything was covered. And, um, you know, so again, it's just good to see what, that, that to, to Mrs. Sullivan's point, that's what happens when you've trained and then the team works together and the team comes together, um, you know, and, uh, that is all. I think the last thing I just wanted to share is that um, Chief Gomes had said, um, out of abundance of caution, um, once the situation is controlled peacefully, right, with no conflict, no injury, um, a police chief does not have to do a sweep. The situation had been under control, but Manny had asked Mike and I and, and, and Sue and Cliff um, if we agreed with his decision, and universally and collectively, absolutely, absolutely do it. So some people might say that was overkill. No, it was the right thing to do, uh, and we all stand by that, and safety is paramount. I also want to thank the teachers that are here today. I want to thank parents that are here today. Um, this is a conversation that needs to be um, continued. Um, we need to continue to work together. The number one thing, and we said this the other day, right, when you drop your child off, you want your child to come home safe. You want the teachers that are going to work every day that are dedicated, educated to be safe, and we're going to continue that in BPS. As long as I chair it, as long as all of you are working with us and with the superintendent, we'll get it done. And I also just want to give a, a shout out to Dr. Zakowitz because I called Mike's cell phone and Dr. Zach picked it up and uh, I might have had some colorful language uh, and I do apologize at that time, Dr. Zach. Uh, I don't always handle stress the best, but I also want to say what's amazing, uh, if you don't laugh, you cry, right? So um, Mike was able to talk 
to two different people on two different phones at the same time. I don't know how he did it, but he did it. He's a good multitasker. But uh, on, a, on, a serious, on a serious note, there is no price tag on safety. So as long as I'm mayor, the city budget, and Mike and the school budget and all of you, we're going to put money in and resources in. We need to do that because we owe it to the boys and girls, but we owe it to the dedicated staff of everybody that works, not just up here, largest public high school east of the Mississippi, but throughout the district. We need to do that, and we will do that. Is there any other comments before I entertain a motion to adjourn? Remember, oh, Tony, please. Mr. Rodriguez. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, when I received the call yesterday, um, I was right down the street at Good Sam. Um, I was the first word was like, no, this isn't happening. Um, being a former student, you know, 4,000 plus, you know, it's basically four high schools under one roof. Um, I think we need to emphasize on our staff to pay attention to the conversation that these students are having in the hallway, um, body language. And that's a lot of intel that, that could be passed over to our school division with the police. Um, and for those that, sh you know, think that, you know, p school police is a bad thing, this is a prime example of why we sh should have an, an, an increase um, with that division across the city. Um, you know, just being a parent and uh, my daughter sending me a text message, I'm like, how do I... What do I tell her, you know, to keep her calm? Because she's like, there's a lot of police at the school. What's going on? You know, I just said somebody was found with something they shouldn't have. Uh, everything's under control. They're just trying to get dismissal ready. So you're all set. Um, as a parent, no parent should be able to, you know, say, some, you know, let their daughter or child know this is what's going on. And, you know, these kids are supposed to be in a safe environment. And, uh, you know, being a former Brockton High graduate, it's a very large school. There's a lot of moving pots. There's a lot of cliques. A lot of these young kids in the streets uh, idolize a lot of people that they shouldn't. And I think that needs to be embedded in them that there's only one place for that, not in the city. Right. Thank you very much, Ms. Rodriguez. Any last comments or thoughts or insights at this time? Again, I truly thank each and every one of you for coming here at 9 o'clock on a Saturday. Mr. Sullivan. Yeah, I was just wondering about Tuesday morning. What's going to happen, Mike? Is, is it a regular day, or should they come earlier? Or? No, it's a regular school day, but we'll have, again, extra police will be here. Um, it'll, you know. it'll, it'll slow down a little bit. What's that? The, the kids will slow down a little bit? Well, no, it's a normal, it's a normal arrival. We'll, you know, we'll obviously be, it'll be, it'll take a little bit longer for students to get into the building, but... Um, traffic should be a lot better because when, always when there's more police, <laughs> people obey the traffic laws a lot more than they do when, the, you know, when there's not enough office. So, you know, it'd probably be a lot easier to get in, um, you know, traffic on uh, Tuesday morning. But it's probably going to be it's going to be slower for students entering the building because, again, they enter through the identified doors and, you know, with the wands, it will be it will be a slower process. But no, it, we'll have to we have to keep everything the same time. Chief Combs, I was just wondering, on these wands for Tuesday, w would they pick up a, uh, like a fingernail clipper or a file as metal? Dr. Murray, do you have any information? Again, I, I'm it, sorry, just because we're Actually, taking, I, I have it because I worked with Danny Vaughn probably three years ago. I think they're Garrett's. I think Garrett is the company that we went with and Danny is the one that sets there's different settings on them again they're, they're going to pick up belt buckles and yep. things like that but you know there are different settings to them so um, but we did purchase several of them I think Danny and I did that about three four years ago so I think we should as a, as a committee um, entertain, an, entertain an idea to acquire more of those um, of course for Brockton High but also for other schools as well right and we hope that they can just sit on a shelf and not be used in our elementary or middle schools, but I think we should spend the money. I don't know how much they are, but we should kick the can down the road on Tuesday and talk about that, maybe get a price analysis, and then we can entertain a motion to, uh, to acquire some of those. Um, any other questions, Mr. Sullivan? No, I just wanted to tell the students to be careful. Don't put a piece of metal in your uh, pants pocket. It's going to slow everything down. You've got to get in. You've got to get in safe. And we all know what happens with these schools. 
we can't have that happen here. I, like, I'll say it again, I think everybody did a great job. The Brockton police, the school police, the mayor, the vice chairman, and Joyce. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Also, let's give a shout out to Melinda Campbell. When you do an emergency meeting, there's a lot of work that goes into an emergency meeting, and this was done within 12 hours. Uh, 20, yeah, 12 hours. So thank you, Melinda, and thank you, BCA, for coming here on a Saturday and taping this as well. Um, any other comments before we uh, entertain? I will entertain a motion to adjourn, and I truly thank everybody for being here, and we hope everybody comes back 6 o'clock on Tuesday in the same room, okay? Entertain a motion? Motion to adjourn. Motion by Mrs. Sullivan, seconded by Ms. Azak. I'll read the roll. Uh, Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mr. D'Agostino? Yes. Mr. Minicello? Yes. Mrs. Mendez? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Ms. Azak? Mr. Sullivan? Yes. Chair says yes. Drive careful. Have a great weekend. Thank you, everybody.